I would like to call the meeting of the Deerfield Planning Board to order on January 3rd, 2022 at it is 7.01 p.m. And I've asked Denise to read our prologue here. Um, excuse me, Annalie, but the camera's not working. Oh, good, okay, so. This is good to know now. Okay. I, in the meantime, also want to thank everyone in attendance here for wearing their masks. Um, we certainly know that everywhere, including Franklin County, COVID cases are rising. Franklin is the highest it's ever been. Our hospitals are at max. So thank you for wearing your masks here tonight and everywhere thank you so any camera yet yes it's on thank you I, yeah Good. all right denise i'll read this okay the meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the governor baker's june 16th 2021 act extending certain COVID 19 measures adopted during the state of emergency included an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law GLC 30A 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if the technological problems interact the virtual broad broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details noted below. Uh, meeting ID 911-604-1580, password 570012. Dial in numbers 312-626-6799. Excellent. Thank you, Denise. Um, I'll uh, remind us all here that um, our meeting guidelines are to speak one at a time, follow our Deerfield Code of Conduct to be respectful, considerate, courteous, also to be concise, non-repetitive, and recognized by the chair. <laughs> So, uh, board members, and we will note who is remote and who is in person. Uh, Denise Mason? Here, in person. Andrea Liebson? Present, in person. <clears throat> Rachel Blaine? Pre present, in person. Kathy Watroba? Present, and Zoom. Thank you. Kathy Sylvester? Present, and uh, remote. And remote, and Mary Cloutier? Hey, Mary Cloutier, present and remote. And Annalie Wolfcole, present and present <laughs> in person. <clears throat> um, with apologies to the uh, planning board as we had some last minute scurrying around with minutes, um, but we do have minutes that were distributed today. Um, so minutes from November 1st, 2021. Um, are there any additions or corrections? And maybe we'll, we can vote to, after additions and corrections, we can vote on them all at once. Okay. Look like we're okay with additions and corrections. Uh, how about November 15th, 2021? Um, Rachel Blaine, no E. Oopsie. No A, no E. <laughs> <laughs> That's Emily Wolfkuhl, who's had many problems with her name. I thank you. We will make sure there's no E on Rachel Blaine. And no A in Rachel. It's just weird. I'm sorry. It seems so one A. E. One A and Rachel, no E in Blaine. Got it. Thank you. Uh, any other corrections to November 15th? And how about December 6th? My last name is misspelled half the time. It's L E I B S O N. B I B S O N and D L A I N. Okay. Glad that these are our worst problems. Mm -hmm. All right. No, may I have a? Was. 
Is that it uh, for any other corrections? No. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of November 1st, November 15th, and December 6th? Can we not bundle them just because I would okay. need to recuse? Okay. I mean, not recuse, uh, I'm sorry. Motion I'm to staying. approve um, November, uh, November 1st. So I so move. It's Andrea. Second. Any Denise. seconds? Uh, any further discussion? Um, those, I think, since we have remote, we have to have roll call on all of our votes. So, Denise? Yes. Andrea? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Without a knee. Kathy Watroba? Yes. Kathy Sylvester? Yes. And Mary Cloutier? Yes. And Annalie Wolfkul? Yes. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of um, November 15th? I make a motion to approve the minutes of November 15th. I second, Denise. Rachel. Thank you. Any discussion? Thank you. Um, so, Denise Mason? Yes. Andrea Leibson? Yes. Rachel Blaine? Yes. Kathy Wittroba? Yes. Kathy Sylvester? Yes. And Mary Cloutier? Yes. And a motion to approve the minutes of December 6, 2021. I so move, Andrea. Thank you, Andrea. I second it, Denise. Thank you, Denise. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, Denise Mason? Yes. Andrea Liebson? Yes. Rachel Blaine? Abs uh, abstain. Abstain. Kathy Wittroba? Yes. Kathy Sylvester? Yes. And Mary Cloutier? Yes. And Emily wolf -Cool, yes. So the minutes are approved. Thank you very much. Um, okay. uh, so we will proceed with our agenda here. The first thing being uh, public hearing. Um, for our change in ownership of uh, Sun's Mass and Ember Gardens. So um, oops, just a moment, please, and we will read the uh, notice of the public hearing. <laughs> Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on January 3rd, 2022 at 7 p.m. This is a request to amend the site plan, special permit, and stormwater permit issued to Suns Mass Inc. by the Planning Board for the Town of Deerfield for the marijuana cultivation operation to be located at 198 Mill Village Road as follows with amended applicant Ember Gardens Productions, LLC, 254 New Hill Avenue, Somerset, Mass, 02726. Amend shall immediately terminate, what is it? Amend condition 19, the within special permit shall not be transferable by the applicant and further shall be further shall immediately terminate should the applicant cease operation of the marijuana establishment. Should the applicant's license from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts expire or be terminated, or should the applicant assign, convey, or otherwise transfer the within approval and permit contrary, notwithstanding the above prohibition. Notwithstanding the foregoing, the planning board may amend the within special permit from time to time and may waive any portion of this condition 19. The foregoing shall be at the sole discretion of the planning board. Meetings are being held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass 01373. Remote particip participation noted below. Good, thank you very much, Andrea. Um, Jen, abutters were notified of this public hearing. Sue, do you want to? Or Sue? I should say, let's introduce Sue. This is um, the staff Sue, person. Yeah helps the planning board, Sue Brulat. Want to say hi? She's on. <laughs> I see her in the corner there. Sue, um, we're th welcome. Were abutters notified of this public hearing? You're muted. Yes, they were notified. Thank you, Sue. Um, so to introduce the meeting as uh, Andrea more than completely introduced it. This is a public hearing 
to address uh, transfer of the existing decisions for special permit, site plan review, and stormwater management uh, to the new owners, Ember Gardens. And um, I think we have applicant here uh, who can maybe introduce the issue a little bit more. And please state your name and go forward. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Shane Hyde. I'm the CEO of Ember Gardens. Uh, it's been seen. I'm to... Just a moment, please. I'm sorry, Jen? The mic isn't working. Could you? We can't hear. Okay, just a moment. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm, I apologize. While we get to, while we get to the mic working, my name is Leslie Delaney Hawkins. I'm the attorney for the applicant, and I'm here remotely while Shane Hyde, who's the CEO of Ember Gardens, is there in person. So we want to say thank you again for having us, and we really appreciate your time this evening. And um, Shane, if you want to introduce yourself before we go into the, the details of what we're requesting this evening, that would be great. Sure. Um, again, my name is Shane Hyde, the CEO of Ember Gardens. Um, we, a quick background, um, we're a company based out of Massachusetts um, looking to do cultivation and manufacturing operations here in Deerfield. Um, we previously, previously received the licenses uh, for both these uses out in Eastern Massachusetts and Middleborough. Um, it was an industrial park and it didn't fit our vision for what we wanted to do long term for cultivation. Uh, for the past about 18 months, we've been looking you know, far wide across the Commonwealth for a better location. Um, found a perfect location here in Deerfield um, at the Mill Road location um, and uh, have been working with the previous owners, SunMass, um, to try to transfer over all the uh, applicable permits and everything else from, from them to us so we can move forward um, with the construction, finish the construction, and hopefully get the oper operation there open as soon as possible. Uh, Leslie will uh, get into the details of the what's needed tonight. Um, we previously did meet with the select board in September, um, and we'll be meeting with them, I believe, later on this month to also transfer permits on their side of the fence um, over to us as well. Thank you, Shane. Thank, thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you. Um, <clears throat> and if, if it would uh, please the planning board, I, I'd be happy to give just a brief overview. Of introduce yourself. And unfortunately, I think you have to speak slowly because it's a bit muffled um, through the video. I apologize for that. No, no, no worries at all. I, mean, I also only recently left working for a municipality in Massachusetts. So I have run, had the pleasure of running many of these hearings. So I understand the, the tech, technological challenges. So my name is Leslie Delaney Hawkins. I am an attorney with Prince Lobel and I'm representing Amber Gardens. Uh, before we even go into kind of the details of what we're requesting, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to town administrator, Casey Warren, to uh, Sue Burlett, to everyone who has just been incredibly helpful for us through this process, but because we know that cannabis is a new industry, we know there's this is a moving target, and everyone has just been incredibly helpful as we've tried to find a path forward. So as Shane noted, what we are requesting tonight is to amend the existing special permit to amend, first of all, the actual holder of the special permit from Sun's Mass to Ember Gardens, to this entity. And the second, which is a little more in the weeds, is to amend condition 19, which gives you as the planning board, the ability to waive the non-transferability piece of it. And what this will allow us to do is to purchase the property from Sun's Mass to ideally enter into a host community agreement with the Board of Selectmen and to move forward. Now, Shane and his team, as Shane noted, had hold, already hold uh, provisional licenses in other parts of the state. They are social equity applicants, which means that they have a, an expedited review process through the CCC, the state entity that oversees this. And we are completely committed to this location and to moving forward with getting operational on the ground as soon as ideally this summer. But one of the things we also want to make to the planning board, to the board of selectmen and to the town as a commitment is that we will give you updates once a month on where we are every step of the way. Because we know that 
some of the concerns over issuing host community agreements or special permits or whatever the applicable requirement is, is that once you issue it, you are then in the dark, right? And we know that municipalities are also issuing these permits because there should be a positive, a net positive for the community. So we want to make it very clear that we want to continue to be in constant communication with all of the various entities as we move to, if we're granted this requested amendment, and if we're granted a host community agreement, we want to move forward in communications with you as we move forward to actually opening and operating at this site. But this is something that Shane and his team are very excited about. And we have found to date that the town has been an incredible partner and very flexible in these conversations. And so we're here tonight to answer any questions you may have and to provide any additional information we can. Thank you, Leslie. So you're talking about giving us monthly updates basically until operations begin, is that correct? Absolutely. If that is something that the town would, would want, we're more than happy to provide that. Okay, that's something we can discuss during our deliberations, thank you. Um, I think we will go forward next with our public hearing of the comments from the public again, be mindful of being respectful, non-competitive, speaking one at a time, and also brief with a two minute limit. Uh, so do we have any comments from the public? And uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll um, recognize people in attendance and uh, is it, would it be Sue or Jen who could then um, recognize people on Zoom? They've got quite a few there, so. So I think uh, I'll do it tonight and Sue can take note and in the future know how it works. So if you're on Zoom, can you please use your, raise your hand and I will do it as first come first serve. And did you say you're gonna do the audience first, Annalie or? Yes. <clears throat> yes. yes. Okay. Right. And um, with a reminder of identifying your name and your address and for the people who are in attendance here um, need to come up to the microphone channel move to the side and with good old COVID I guess try to find that appropriate distance so we're not breathing too much on the mic. <laughs> um, we have a new uh, IT <laughs> helper here. This is wonderful Mr. McDonald. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, are there, in, uh, there was uh, one comment okay. here, if you please come forward and then we'll alternate with Zoom. I have a feeling Zoom might be a little bit more. Thank you. And, uh, yes. Okay, um, Kathy Melman, 188 Mill Village Road, uh, Butters. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Can I do it again? No, Okay, yeah, does everybody have to say <laughs> Um, Mike, I have a couple questions. Um, the owner on the application is Pioneer Gardens, not Sun Mass. Yeah. And um, I want to know exactly what they're going to be going to be transferring. I know we've had many hearings on. I know it's they're talking about 19, but are they going to be transferring the gas storage eventually? Is that all included in this? They got a manufacturing license. Are they going to be doing manufacturing? Is this all going to be taken one at a time? Come back like SunMass did. I mean, we sat and things are going. You know, there was a long process, and now mm -hmm. there's nothing happened. So I guess those are some of my questions. And I guess my question too was, SunMass actually terminated, or was it um, they just pulled out? I don't know. I sat here through many meetings hearing all kinds of good things about what SunMass was gonna do for this town and nothing has ever happened. So, um, you know, I see deteriorating houses sitting next to me and, um, you know, it's sad. So I just, sure monthly statements are nice, but we got a lot of nice things from SunMass too. And there's been a lot of this going around, not only in Deerfield, but in local and area towns and, um, Nothing's come to fruition yet, so that's yes. my concern. Thank you, Kathy. Um, uh, 
what the planning board has been trying to do with questions from the audience rather than directly having back and forth is during our deliberations to actually address the question. So I want to make sure that I've got it complete here. You want to know what exactly is being transferred. Yeah. Um, and also what from happened whom? to Planning from board. whom? From whom? Because the application says Pioneer Gardens, not Sun Mass. Or Go Grits, which was the yet another entity. It was one of the mm -hmm. Go Grits. G O G R I T Z was another entity that was involved. Okay. And then um, your other question in general was what happened to Sun's Mass? At the end of the public comment period, we'll have the applicant giving a conclusion. So I think perhaps either Shane or Leslie can address the negotiations and what has happened with Sun Mass, perhaps. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, we didn't hear what that who said that someone f is here from Sun's Mass who can address the answer to Ms. Melnick's question. Thank you. Uh, so from Zoom. I, I don't have any hands up. Oh, okay. So Okay. Oh, we have one. Carolyn. 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 Yes. I just want to say, as a as member of the select board and board of health, we're um, anxious for someone to move ahead and and um, be a good partner with us. We have not um, had a host agreement yet, um, so we're looking forward to that. But um, I think the select board is. In, I can speak for the select board and say that we're generally very disappointed that. Um, Sun Mass hasn't moved ahead. And so it would be nice um, to be and be supportive of um, this new venture and the transfer, um, but it would be nice to have some guarantee that it's really gonna go forward. And Madam Chair, this is, this is Leslie Delaney Hawkins. I'm happy to address any and all of this, and then we could turn it over to the Sons Mass representative at, at your convenience when you think it's appropriate. Thank you. Yes, I think we'll do that at the end of all the public comments. Uh, I think we have another public comment here. Yes, sir. If you'd like to come forward. Just uh, want to remind anybody that goes to the mic to really speak clearly into the microphone. It's a little bit challenging at home to hear. Thank you. Uh, Bruce St. Peter's uh, Snowberry Circle, uh, South Deerfield. Um, I was reading the application. I, just, I'm, I really want to see this thing go, but I just want to make sure that all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted on this. So I just have a couple questions. Uh, the um, condition 19 that you're supposedly amending uh, reads, I can, I can uh, read it, and it might be a good thing to do. We can. Yeah, go. go um, that the within special permit shall not be transferable by the applicant, and further, shall immediately terminate should the applicant cease operations of the marijuana establishment. Should the applicant's license from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts expire or be terminated, or should the applicant assign, convey, or otherwise transfer the within approval and permit contrary to notwithstanding the above prohibition. Okay, so basically that refers only to the uh, special permit and not the stormwater permit and the site plan, You're, the way I read it. Those were done in two separate things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, They're voted separately. Uh, chapter 179, section 4666, uh, it basically said the same thing. Uh, under um, F, small f, Roman numeral four, uh, numerical four, any transfer or change of ownership to marijuana established shall be treated as an amendment to any permit. And that does include the site plan right. approval issue here under and shall require public hearing before the planning board. So that would kind of cover those two aspects. However, there is no mention of allowing an amendment of the stormwater permit. And I just want to make sure that everything is in order 
so that somebody doesn't get caught down the road <laughs> yeah. on that because the condition 19 me mentions nothing but that of either the right. site plan or the stormwater and those were voted in separate uh, parcels uh, when the uh, when the, the permit was issued uh, a couple other questions uh, what happens to the host agreement that we have um, who is going to keep picking up all of the additional um, legal expenses, you know, re additional recordings because this was all recorded, the planning board expenses, uh, the hearing expenses, the ongoing legal expenses that just keep uh, going on and on with all these marijuana establishments and the town has yet to see anything come back on it. Uh, the other thing I would possibly, since this has been opened up, uh, maybe uh, look at putting a uh, bond on the requirement of um, section 4666 uh, small f numerical uh, Roman numeral 6 marijuana cultivation and product manufacturing establishment shall be required to remove all material plants equipment or other paraphernalia prior to surrendering its state registration license slash license or ceasing its operation so that Hopefully this particular corporation won't have ever come to that and we won't have to see that, but in the future, so we don't end up with somebody walking away from, as it's happened right now, and leaving a mess. So is there any way of doing something similar to the solar bond law requiring uh, a bond because this has no teeth at all. It says they're gonna remove it. Well, if I turn around and refuse to remove it, what are you gonna do? You know, so, Yes, you can sue me and everything else, providing I'm still in business, but it would seem that would be a lot more forward looking to require a bond of some sort to make sure that this is bonded. Thank so, you. And those are a couple of comments I have. Thank you. So, if I understand correctly, um, your concerns are that the stormwater permit and the site plan review application are included in this um, number 19 that they've asked waiver for. Um, what happens to the prior post agreement? Who pays for the additional filings that the town has already paid for with the prior owner? And um, is it possible to have a bond on uh, number 4666 F6 uh, requirement to um, remove all of the operations if the operation ceases to be? Yes, is that uh, plus this uh, same question on the stormwater management uh, permit as well. I don't think you mentioned, I think you mentioned this. So site plan. Oh, stormwater. Okay, thank you. Site thank you. Thank well you, Mr. Sinclair. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Zoom? Zoom, do we have any other Zoomers? No, there's no hands up. Three, three. And uh, any other public comments here? No. Okay, then maybe we will go forward with the applicant and the applicant's council. Um, addressing as many of these questions as possible. Thank you. We greatly appreciate the opportunity and we appreciate the input. Um, I will start with addressing condition 19. The proposed amended language specifically reflects the existing language in condition 19. So condition 19 is part of the actual, uh, and, and as I believe uh, Mr. St. Peter is correctly identified. It is not just an application, or it's not just a permit, a special permit. It is a special permit uh, along with a uh, site plan permit, special permit, and stormwater permit. That is all in one special permit, and that's what was noticed. The language in condition 19 only refers to it as a special permit. And I, I believe the legal intent there was just for it to be all encompassing, which is why our proposed amended language only cites a special permit. So this was the intent and the plans that were filed was for this to apply to all of those permits. Uh, in terms of the legal expenses in the host community agreement, after extensive negotiations with the town and with its legal counsel, we determined, and really the town determined, that the best and cleanest way to approach this was a new host community agreement, which actually the draft incorporates more provisions than were in the initial host community agreement. 
to protect the town. And again, we absolutely understand the concern about places and applicants receiving a host community agreement or receiving a special permit and not moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. Now, again, though that document, which is still in negotiations with town council, who has been, again, another person who's been phenomenal to work with, we're still in negotiations with that, but that will go before the Board of Selectmen before this applicant can move forward with filing with the Cannabis Control Commission. And there are provisions in that document, which will be obviously made public, all of this is a public record, that actually addresses who is going to cover those expenses, and that would be on the applicant or the eventual licensee. So we understand that concern. And I apologize, I'm looking at my notes and I, I know the first name is Kathy, but I think I missed the last name um, who spoke. Melnick. Melnick. Ms. Melnick. Melnick. Well, I appreciate that and I apologize. What is being transferred tonight? The request is for the special permit, the stormwater permit, and all of the affiliated permits. Now, the applicant still has to go before the Board of Selectmen to obtain a host community agreement on agreeable terms that benefit the town. We in no way are disputing the 3% local option tax. We're no way, in any way, disputing the 3% community impact fee. What we're looking to do is actually open and operate here. Now, the plans that were filed were filed by Suns Mass. Suns Mass was acquired by a larger company and their counsel is on and can speak to this much more articulately than I can. But there is a legal cap on the number of licenses you can have in each license type. And they realized that they were in the middle of a different transaction. And that's why they looked for a buyer uh, who would actually want to come in, open at this location and begin commence operations that would ultimately not just benef benefit the operation, but it would also benefit the town. Now, I don't, I won't speak for our son's mass. I don't think it was through any ill will, but we understand that in this emerging industry, it's been a moving target, right? The goalposts have moved over and over and over again, no matter where you are in the state. And that's not Deerfield's problem. That's literally the nature of this beast. But we're in a place now that I think we know what we need to get done to be able to open and operate. And I can tell you on behalf of, of my client, and Shane is sitting there and, and can tell you the same, we're absolutely committed to opening and operating as soon as possible. So in addition to us being a business that brings in employees and brings in other positive contributions to the community, you're seeing that tax revenue. Because we understand you, you're not entering into these host community agreements for nothing. Uh, and with that, I know that Phil Silverman, who is counsel for Suns Mass, is on. I know that Shane uh, referenced that there's another individual from Suns Mass, and I'm happy to defer to them. Could you address your <laughs> interest in the uh, in the request of the concern about having a bond in case the um, operation ceased to be? We are absolutely happy to have that discussion. I think that's something that would be, would require both legally on the city, on the town side and on our side, a little more vetting. But at the end of the day, we're looking to do business in your town. We're looking to be net value added and we're happy to have, continue having those conversations. Just one thing to add to that, there is a, Disappear in the middle of the night with a bunch of uh, you know, marijuana on site mm -hmm. to be disposed of. Um, we can't hear you. Could you speak into the mic and, and state your name, please? Uh, Shane Hyde. Um, there is a bond requirement at the state level um, that Leslie can speak to um, that is for that exact purpose in case of winding down of operations. Um, that you can't, as a company, leave in the middle of the night and, and leave any. Um, uh, active marijuana products on the site. You're going to have to lean in, Shane. We cannot hear you online. I'm sorry. <clears throat> We've got some tech assistant here. From... Um, I just wanted to say again um, that there is 
a, uh, a requirement for a bond at the state level that the CCC mandates. Um, that is for the very purpose of winding down operations. Um, if there is any, uh, like say if a company goes out of business, um, that it can't just disappear into the night with no mechanism for the state to make sure that there's no uh, marijuana product left at a site that is winding down. Um, but as Leslie mentioned, we are um, totally open to negotiating the town a separate bond um, as well. Um, to make them feel more comfortable based on what's happened in the past with other operators. Do you know if that um, CCC agreement or bond uh, just pays to the state or it comes part of it comes back to us or are you not it, certain? It does not. It, it, the, the bond associated with winding down a cannabis establishment, among other things, covers any municipal option taxes that are still owed. Thank you. We didn't have that with Sunsnest. I don't. That was well. Yeah, it's a requirement with the it's, state. It's a. It's well, a. Been down, we've state. already been down this. You know, traveled this road before. We didn't have that. I don't know. Hmm. But the it's newer or how that went, didn't work in. Can I tell you? Um, I'm sorry to butt in, but I'm still. I'm still think that we need a clarity. You're working with Sun's Mass. Sun Mass. That's who you are negotiating with. Uh, to take over the, the property, correct? The property, but the property is still owned by Pioneer Garden. Um, I, I'd have to defer to some mass to talk about the various legal entities. That would be helpful. And if I could just be clear, there's there is a difference between who the property owner is and who the special who the operator is, and who the special exactly who the special permit yeah. okay, holder, holder is. I have a hands up and I would like to remind people to please state their name before they speak. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Okay. And Mary. Um, I just want to make, make sure procedurally that it's, it's okay for me to ask this question now. Make sure we're doing it right. Yes. Um, but my question through the chair is mostly for you, Jennifer. Procedurally, we're having a little, little bit of a shift, right, from when Sun's Mass initially um, made this. Uh, application and so we put some safeguards in and so I'm wondering if things like you know a pre-application sit down from with some math happen with you or if that's something we're gonna do again with these guys um, you know just to make sure we have a complete application um, I know that that wasn't the procedure then so I just want to make sure that uh, yep. we have you know we we're did. All on the same page. we had a zoom call so we spoke before any application came in. So, yep, we have been moving forward as, as planned. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Application. Um, are there other comments oh, from oh, right? yeah. the closing our arguments, and then we could close the public comment and have time for planning board deliberation? We no, definitely I want don't. to hear from Sun's Mass. Yeah, first. and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to. I haven't seen the application. No. application was the amendment application so that was something that you voted on um, allowing so that's all we've seen we haven't seen any of the the packet of the site plan review or a special permit we're all where we're voting on tonight is the transfer of the existing permit mine, right the transfer of the decisions that we made regarding the prior applications for stormwater permit, special permit site plan review that we would be transferring basically those applications with their accompanying decisions. And we would transfer all of that to uh, the new, to Amber Gardens. And so in and fact- And start the process of looking at the packet. No, then That's I mean, the what's being transferred is all the conditions that we made for our with our site plan review with the special permit with the stormwater everything I, as i understand everything will be just now transferred as if they were the original applicants right. uh, so it's not going to be a whole new application for any of those things is that correct that's, jen that's correct yes other than Number 19, which was a condition of the previous, uh, maybe that's what I think, then the storm 
water application, but that states that the permit shall not be transferable. And so there is the request that we hop uh, over that, that we make sure Wait, that, that yes, that um, in fact, all of that it is inclusive that the special permit, the stormwater uh, permit and the site plan review decisions all are incorporated in our transfer of ownership to Ember Gardens. Correct. I have another question then. Yes. Has Bob reviewed these? Bob, have you reviewed these plans? Does this happen prior yes. to your term, no? I reviewed, I mean, uh, we're just transferring it. I mean, all that was settled before I got here. I mean, there are, there are open, there are open building permits, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I reviewed okay. it in the sense of a long time ago. And, and I'm sorry, again, this is Leslie. I don't know if it's helpful. What we have filed in this full package are the same plans that were previously approved for Suns Mass as the prior applicant. Obviously, you, everything will have to be vetted by the town before we pull any building permit should we even be approved. And additionally, just like any project, we'll be working very closely with the, the planning board and all the other municipal entities to ensure that we're adhering to all of your rules and regulations, as well as those of the CCC, as they may change from time to time. But what we're proposing today is nothing, we're not looking to do anything different than what was previously approved, except to the extent we're complying with all of your regulations and the state's regulations. And I, I apologize, I was remiss in not noting before, Sons Mass's provisional license from the CCC, and I, I believe this was raised as a question, it was not terminated, it was voluntarily relinquished due to their merger with another entity. And the fact that without relinquishing the same, they would have exceeded the legal cap on licenses. It was in no way a, a, a penalty against them. It was just that they were in the middle of a, a business transaction. Thank you. Um, so any other comments from the applicant or Sons Mass or uh, Applicants Council? Um, no, we just want to make very clear that we are here and Shane speaks better to this than I do. We are here to be a net positive in this municipality and we're here to answer any questions you may have, even if they come up after tonight. We're, we're not looking to get a special permit, get an HCA and walk away. We're looking to be partners. Thank you. <laughs> That's what we're looking for also, <laughs> obviously. Um, all right, um, then planning board, are you ready to close the public hearing and have our own? Jen has her hand. Deliberations, up. Jen? I just wanted to say if you wanted Sun's Mass to say something, yes. probably mm -hmm. this would be the time. They must be Zooming somewhere. Yes. Yes, please. Sun's Mass, go for it. Hi, <laughs> thank you. My name is Phil Silverman. I'm an attorney for Sons Mass. Um, the reality is my, my client is sort of, is pretty sorry that it isn't able to go forward. Um, it, it had fully intended to do that. Uh, their business plan changed a lot as they got to understand sort of the Massachusetts regulatory scheme better. Uh, they were looking to combine this with some retail licenses that they were hoping to obtain. Uh, turned out that wasn't so easy to do. They weren't able to obtain everything. And then when um, an opportunity arose, uh, there was a, a purchaser uh, that came in to buy uh, what Sons Mass had. Uh, the purchaser basically looked at this and said, we, we already have our cultivation. We, you know, we would be exceeding license limits. So we can't take that on. We have to we, we, we just have to have you abandon that um, license because it would put us in violation of CCC regulations. So, um, you know, again, uh, there's, there's some, uh, there, there's, there's some, uh, I wouldn't call it sadness, but there's, a, they did not necessarily want to have to do this, but it really, uh, their business plan changed because of the realities of what was going on in Massachusetts. And they then switched to a mode of trying to find somebody uh, that they thought would be able to come in and satisfy the town 
uh, that they would be a good operator. And we think we've, we found that. We think Ember is really an excellent operator and is gonna do great things for the town, just like my client had hoped to do, but we think these people will be a good partner for you. So uh, we hope you can understand that and, and we're hopeful that you'll uh, approve it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're glad to have you here this evening. All right, I have another question. Uh -huh. All right, Ms. Blaine. Um, so tell me more about your other op your, the rest of your operation in Massachusetts, just so that we have the context of why you make such a good partner, not. <laughs> um, so <laughs> elsewhere, I'm, I'm um, we are planning to have three retail locations, um, one in Boston, one in Cape Cod in the town of Orleans, and one in New Bedford. Um, we also will have home delivery um, from Middleborough. Um, as well as a manufacturing kitchen license, which will be in New Bedford, not here in Deerfield. In Deerfield, we plan to be our only cultivation site, as well as um, extractions, um, which will be um, non-solvent uh, extractions, so ice and water and pressure, so not um, you know, any sort of um, eth um, ethanol or any butane type of you know, explosive material. And that's all something that we'll get into uh, more detail as we get closer um, prior to construction with your board and other boards across the city. And approximately how much more time do you envision for construction until operations begin? Um, we're hoping to get the, our own state license for this location um, by the end of the spring at the latest and, and then hopefully construction sometime beginning in the summer. Um, Suns Mass did do some site work already there um, so we got to kind of finish the swing on that as well as kind of put our any other alterations, which we still haven't, you know, fully determined for the midst of due diligence on the property now. Um, but the, you know, if everything breaks our way, um, you know, we'd love to get this thing open by growing season of 2023 at the very, very latest. Um, so that to be like around May of next year. Um, but the goal would hopefully be able to open up sooner than that. Um, again, if if things go our way with the construction and, and the town approvals and everything else. Um, obviously, this is a pretty big facility and there's a lot of uh, rocks on turn there that we're going through now um, with Sons of Mass. Um, but everything that we've seen so far uh, is, is kind of confirmed our initial gauge of the site, which is it's a great place for us to, to build for our future there for cultivation and kind of be our keystone facility across the state. So we're very excited to be here. Um, and you know, want to work and partner with you guys moving forward. To try to get this open as soon as possible. Thank you. Yes, huh. Denise. I have a question. Um, you're saying hoping a lot. <laughs> That's a little concerning. So you said you're hoping to get the license by spring. What happens if you don't? Um, we've previously gotten licenses, um, but we would need you know a license here in order to obviously open. You need both everything at the state and municipal level. Um, I, it's obviously just out of my control. Um, I, I can't grant myself a license. Um, so I just want to kind of put and, it and Shane, I, Shane, if I can just jump in there. So the, the CCC's review is, it's not site specific, it's entity specific. These are the background checks and uh, Ember Gardens and their affiliated uh, entities have uh, successfully obtained provisional licenses from the CCC for other locations. Additionally, because they're a social equity applicant, they're fast tracked. They receive priority review at the state level. We cannot apply under the law with the state until we have an executed host, uh, host community agreement, but we do intend to apply the second, should we be fortunate enough to be granted one for their review and given I, I do this for, for a living, for a social equity applicant that's been previously approved. The timeline that Shane is proposing is entirely realistic. But again, that's one of the reasons that we want to offer to give continual updates to the planning board, to the town, to the board of selectmen, because we do understand the concern about, about folks not moving through this process. And social equity applicant means it means that at the state level, uh, this entity is qualified. There, there are two designations that are fast track. There is economic empowerment, of which we are not, and there's social equity, of which we are. Uh, it means that we, we qualified under a number of factors that the state has identified as factors in the, uh, the you know, obviously part of the legalization of cannabis was to 
help those who were disproportionately impacted, those communities disproportionately impacted on the war on drugs based on any number of factors, including location, including economic status. And this entity qualifies as social equity under those and has Thank been certified you. by the state. And we can, of course, provide that certification to the town. Thank you. Uh, Denise, so I have a question for Sons Mass. So Sons Mass, so why did why did Sons Mass have difficulty? Why did they not get a license? Thank you. No, my, my client uh, obtained a license. They just can only have so many in yeah, one right. state. They've exceeded the number of facilities. Okay, okay. Okay, them. sorry, thank you. Yep. Any other? Questions or comments? Otherwise, uh, planning board, do um, we want Kathy to? Kathy uh, okay. We will be having our own planning board deliberations. But Kathy, do you have a question for someone in the sons in the in the group? You're Are we on mute? Oh, shut. <laughs> no. Nope. I'm muted now. There. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Great. So um, the original member that was on the planning board at the time is Rachel Blaine. So pardon if if um, the board members are asking questions that may otherwise thought to have been known, but we weren't originally on the board. Okay. So, so Ember Gardens is going to put a septic system in. Is that accurate? But, and, and I'm sorry, could you repeat? So Ember Gardens will be putting a, a septic system in. Sons never put the septic system in. Is that correct? Jane, I will defer to you and your engineer on that. Uh, yeah, it's my belief that there's still another septic system that needs to go in. Uh, yeah. And as Leslie previously said, you know, the previously approved plans um, at this point, we're, we're sticking with them. Um, so if it called for a septic system of a certain size, um, you know, we'll be obligated to put that in prior to uh, commencing any operations. And I just had another question. Um, this odor control measure, so this is only cultivation. So the, there's nothing that's being burned or how, how would it emanate out of this containment, this, this odor, or I, I'm just kind of curious. Um, there would be nothing burned um, at the facility um, in terms of uh, any marijuana plants, um, maybe cultivation and the manufacturing, as I mentioned before, is um, maybe non-solventless, mostly with water pressure um, and ice. Um, the odor control on the greenhouses themselves, um, it'll all be like Sun Mass plan to be within those greenhouses. Um, and as San Sun's Mass uh, previously um, agreed to in terms of odor mitigation, um, devices such as carbon filters would be used in order to try to mitigate um, any of the, the odors emitting from the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. um, it, it will be an open air greenhouse, so it won't, you know, there won't be no, no odor at all, um, but it, it would be mitigated as much as technology as allows um, with the, the greenhouses that are on site currently um, following the same plans that SunMass uh, previously um, proposed and got approved for. Is, may I ask, this is Andrea. Is this your first um, uh, cultivation and um, manufacturing? For for this company, yes. Um, but there's uh, many members of my team that have previously worked on them, um, both in Massachusetts and on the West Coast. Thank you. Worked and designed them. Thank you. Are there, um, other questions? And then the planning board will entertain closing the public hearing no i've got one other question so you said so so it's correct is this correct that the property <laughs> that, that um pioneer garden still owns the property and you're just owning the business so you're leasing the property um, we are our plan for us is to purchase and take control of so the property. purchase and sale agreement and that is contingent upon you being able to open the business i would assume correct okay it, the the purchase and sale agreement is contingent on us receiving all of the necessary permits from the municipality and the state to mm -hmm. open it. But again, I think that speaks to Shane and his team's commitment to this location in that they're not just looking 
to purchase the licenses and the host community agreement, they're actually looking to purchase the property because they're not they're not here for a few years. They're they're here for the long haul. Thank you. Other questions? So you're looking to purchase the property at some point when you're in that. We are actively in just as we're in negotiations regarding the special permit as part of that is the property. We are very actively in, in negotiations regarding the property. And again, if there are any unanswered questions tonight or anything else we can provide, we are here to make ourselves available at your convenience. Thank you. There are no questions online. Okay, and any other questions here? Okay, could we have a motion to close the public hearing? I make a motion to close the public hearing, Kathy Sylvester. Thank you, Kathy. Second, Rachel Blank. Thank you. Um, any discussion about closing the public hearing? Okay. Um, Denise Mason. About closing it? Yes. 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 So the, the motion to close the public hearing. Andrea Leibson. Yes. Andrea Leibson. Yes. Rachel Blaine. Yes. Rachel Kathy Blaine. Batroba. Kathy Batroba. Kathy Batroba. Yes. Kathleen Sylvester. Yes. And Mary Clutier. Uh, we lost Andrea for a moment. And Emily Wolf Cool, yes. So the public hearing is closed. So we'll now have 601. Deliberations. Yes, 601. <laughs> right? Thank you, Rachel. Um, so deliberations amongst the planning board. Kathy Sylvester? I just have a question about the process. Um, there's on number 20, there's a time limit of three years. Can that be shortened? I don't know what if that's possible. I mean, right. we're not kind of in limbo for three years if nothing happens. Well, I think there's a question as to whether or not that three year clock started ticking at the time the original uh, applications were approved. We're just transferring the uh, application decision. So I think those three years are shortened at this point, Kathy, if I'm reading correctly. So that would be shortened till June of this year then. Um, and I apologize, this is Leslie Delaney Hawkins. Are we regarding the three year ticking on the special permit itself? Right. So um, I'm trying to read it here, how to get oh. back to it. That's a point. These, this decision is dated June 25th, 2019. Right. So, in fact, <laughs> and actually, permits were pulled on. The special permit, um, building permits, even though they were never the, the they were never fulfilled. This is something that we worked with uh, with town administrator Warren and um, town council on that that three year clock actually was met, and we can absolutely forward that correspondence where we discuss that because there were building permits pulled. Well, and it, this does talk about. Uh, if substantial use has not sooner commenced, except for good cause, and I believe there's been quite a bit of substantial work that has commenced. There has, and good cause also legally has been defined as, as the pandemic. But again, at the same time, um, we, we completely understand the concern about not acting on permits. And that's why we're committed to keeping the municipality updated should we be granted the special permit. And so how long do, do they have? Maybe Jen can answer that. What is this? I, I don't want to interrupt, excuse me, but it has been closed for comment and you're deliberating. So if you oh, could. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So part of our, thank you, Jen. So part of our question then is. You know, it talks about substantial use, so I don't think it's had any actual use. It's been some work done on it. Um, 
it says it if substantial use has not sooner commenced except for good cause which yeah i'm not madam, sure madam chair this is a town council thank lisa you, mead thank you, yes I so that. under the criteria for special permit um once they've commenced work um as i'm sure the building uh, commissioner will say to advise the board um that and we've looked at this issue they've commenced the permit so um that this issue has been put to bed they have commenced using the permit and therefore the three years no longer applies thank you thank you so was there any limitation on how long this could be drawn out if nothing were to happen or no once they with uh, absent a date by which they had to complete which would be very unusual uh -huh. um it what they merely need to commence so that's occurred thank you thank you kathy i do think that their offer to um keep us appraised and our you know potential commit conditions based on that will be very helpful on this score sure so my guess yeah. is that that's part of the the offer from the applicant is to make sure that we see that kind of progress and we don't end up in the situation which you know the abutter is kind of pointing to which is that she's sitting next to a half-baked cake and so we want to make sure that it's done i don't i think that what we do the offer of keeping us appraised and us building up some sort of um, mechanism by which they can keep us appraised and keep keep that very transparent i think is what's going to be super helpful right. sure yeah Speaking, speaking to that, um, they had offered monthly updates. We're talking about until operations begin, which would be potentially May of 2023. I'm um, considering whether or not quarterly updates would be adequate. Thing is, because we don't know the plan that well, I mean, I'm the only one on the board. I worked on this. We worked on it for a long time, as you can tell by how many meetings it was. Um, there were considerations about energy use that were significant at the time. I think that it's just helpful. The monthly is helpful. I don't think that, and it, the offer is generous and um, would, I think, buy a, a good, the very kind of goodwill that they're looking for. Um, and I don't know how elaborate we can talk to Bob about what kind of you know updates, how they're moving along on it. But because we aren't as familiar with the, the plan, anymore, mm -hmm. I think this keeps us familiar with the plan as well. Uh, I get a bit to Bruce's point. I also do think that the bond, like this is news to me, frankly, and Lisa, maybe you can help guide us some on any kind of escrow bond that would help us to, uh, you know, uh, Looking up Amber Gardens, it's a Massachusetts guys, you know, making good in, in their home state, and, and I have every reason to believe that they'll hang in there with us. But at the same time, you know, that is a that's an important feature, I think, especially given, you know, we've got the abutter sitting there saying, "Yeah, I'd hate to have just an abandoned, half-built facility." So, any advice you could give us there, at least that'd be helpful. Sure. Sure, through you, Madam Chair. Um, two things I would say. I think it would be inappropriate for the um, planning board to amend a, a, the permit that uh, the amendment wasn't sought, right? You have a very specific amendment being sought relative to this permit. They didn't open up the whole permit. You can only consider those things that were sought to be amended. However, um, the uh, boards, the select board, are in the middle of negotiating the um, host community agreement. Uh, in the prior host community agreement, there was a time by which uh, the work was supposed to be completed. And certainly the uh, board can take into consideration a potential bond for equipment removal. You know, keep in mind that most private entities that this board uh, permits, if somebody were to build a, a strip mall, for example, you wouldn't be able to put a bond on removal of the strip mall. That's not how it works. Um, however, the host community agreement can address certain concerns uh, that otherwise this board wouldn't be able to address. And, and Attorney Mead, if I could just follow up on that again, this is Leslie. We understand it's a burden if you want, you don't want to hear from us every month at a hearing. We're happy to provide written correspondence, Thank you. giving you an update. You. you can let us know when you want us to appear and we will be there. So um, the monthly, hmm. 
monthly updates, I think from what Lisa was saying is that we're not open to, to creating more conditions on this uh, application for the change of ownership. So the piece of monthly updates is something that Again, maybe the select board needs to uh, include. Right, in but we will, we can we can vote, we, you know, um, they, and mention it in our in our decision. Just say yay, we support this idea of keeping the town appraised with a shared, you know, a shared report, so that we can keep track of it. I think it's helpful for us to know too how these things. I mean. Speaking of, as somebody who watched this build out, I feel really comfortable about it, but it was a long time ago too, and it, it didn't come to fruition. So is it still viable? Are there other things that we know now that we would have done differently? I don't know, no. I mean, but by the same token, we learn as we go along and uh, mm -hmm. that reporting isn't a terrible thing. I think it, I think it builds goodwill, right. I think. So what you're saying, Rachel, is that the monthly updates would come via potentially what the select board might be asking right. for in their right. post agreement right. and then they're offering it so it's not like excellent okay so it's not something then that we're not we're is not. an issue for us to be doing here mm -hmm. huh. um, and, uh, other... for, the, for the record we will we will also put that in writing to the select board thank you Liz. i think at this point this does have to be just the deliberations among the planning board <laughs> thank you huh. i have a question uh yes kathy do we have any historical equivalent to this type of permit transfer? Like, is there, has the town of Deerfield seen something similar in this regard, or are we sort of cutting a new path in terms of the transfer of a site plan review, a special permit and a stormwater permit from one same type business to another? I mean, is there a historical equivalent that we can look at as a model or are we creating the model? So you're almost wondering if there are unintended consequences and if there is in fact a precedent. Uh, Kat, uh, and Mary or Rachel, are you familiar? I can't think of anything, but I can't imagine that there's not some point, I can't imagine that there's not some point that a business kind of threw up their hands and somebody else came in. Mm -hmm. um, me, but I just don't, I can't think of anything that we've done. Kathy, I can't offer you that. But. So I can, I can address that as well. Um, Madam Chair, yeah, yes. so typically you wouldn't have necessarily, depending on the kind of use, this kind of condition in the permit. Um, typically the permits are recorded, a person buys the property, and then they're just subject to the permits. They don't have to come back in and do a transfer of ownership. This is One of the examples I would give you is that the zoning board would approve a transfer of ownership for a comprehensive permit, for example. Um, because there's a specific requirement in the regulations. In this instance, I believe the board put this condition in because they wanted to know if there was the ownership was changed and because it relates back to the host community agreement as well as the licensing from the CCC. So typically you wouldn't see these because they wouldn't apply, but you added this specific condition to this, this set of permits. Yep. So that it would ha happen transparently. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, anything more than that. Thank you. Other questions from the planning board? I, I believe what we are at this point then um, entertaining is a, a motion and we can have some conversation about this to accept and transfer the existing decisions regarding special permit, site plan review, storm water management to the new owners, Ember Gardens, and this includes waiving or it includes um, that a notation that previous condition number 19 is all inclusive for site plan review, special permit, stormwater, and yes, shall be waived. Correct? Yes. Is that, that's, I believe. So we're... including the notation and that we'll waive it. That it's going to include those things and that we waive it. Yes. Um, and that also we are approving, and I just want to clarify, we're, these are not owners, they're, they are the operators. Operators, operators correct. I, I mean, they own the business that's going to operate, so. <laughs> right. But uh, they're not the owners. And I would make that motion. <laughs> I'm happy Would to you? make whatever she said. That's what I'm saying. With the notation that 
special permit, site plan review, and stormwater are included in uh, 19, provision 19, and that we uh, approve the transfer of this application um, to the the own the operators the owner operators uh ember gardens right and and the, from sun mass it's included in the waiver of and including 19. the waiver waiver of commission mm -hmm. 19, or the provision 19. all right good thank you rachel maybe we have a second yeah. i second it kathy sylvester thank you kathy uh is there any further deliberation Okay, if no further deliberation, we'll call the question. Denise Mason? Denise Mason, yes. Andrea Liebson? Andrea Liebson, yes. Rachel Blaine? Rachel Blaine, yes. Kathy Wittroba? Kathy Wittroba, yes. Kathy Sylvester? Yes, Kathy Sylvester. Anne Mary Cloutier? Anne Mary Cloutier, yes. Okay. And Anne Lee Wolfcool, yes. So the motion passes unanimously. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, Thank you for coming to the field and moving forward with this project. These are your next door neighbors. Excited. You know Kathy? Yeah. Thank you. She's oh, very nice. Right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we now have a second public hearing today uh, at 8.15 in the evening. Um, so uh, we will, uh, Andrea, maybe you can once again read the, um, the notice here. Well, folks, get up to the microphone. Notice of public hearing pursuant to Deerfield Chapter 179, Section 400. Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold hold a public hearing on January 3rd, 2022 at 7 p.m. for a site plan review submitted by the town of Deerfield to construct a municipal park to include athletic fields, accessible paths, picnic areas, and future improvements. The subject property is owned by the town of Deerfield and is proposed to be accessed through the frontage by a paved 22 foot wide entrance driveway on an 8.48 acre parcel of land located on North Main Street map 151 uh, slash lot one zoned industrial and owned by the town of Deerfield. Meetings are being held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass 01373. Remote participation noted. Thank you, Andrea. Um, Sue, abutters have been notified? Yes, they have been notified. Thank you very much, Sue. Um, also, before we proceed, I'd like to recognize that um, Attorney Lisa Mead, who we've heard otherwise in the evening, but in this situation is representing the planning board um, as the, and then the applicants are the town. So Lisa Mead is part of our team representing the planning board. Thank you very much, Lisa. Um, I'd also make note that we did have, the planning board did have a site review on the 30th of December uh, to gather facts. There definitely was no discussion of the project itself or deliberations about the project at that point. Um, I think what we will be having next is a uh, brief but comprehensive <laughs> talks and more on it um, uh, introduction of the project by the applicant who is still setting up. So while they're setting up, um, when we do have our public comments, uh, we will ask if the members of the public who are here in town hall speak, uh, come up and speak at the uh, microphone in the back, and we will leave the table in the front uh, for the applicants to remain seated and speak from. And as they're still working on the microphones, um, again, when at the time when we do have our public comments, wanting to follow the, the Comments are respectful, non-repetitive, two-minute maximum with my 
timekeeper here, uh, speak one at a time recognized by the chair. Uh, tonight, we will not be having pros and cons comments uh, about the application per se, we'll be look, or back and forth between the planning board and the applicants. We'll be looking instead primarily for um, the public and um, ultimately the planning board to um, say questions uh, on a broader scale for discussion at a future point. So I think we are almost ready with all of our technical things here. having us. Thank you for giving us a few minutes to get this all a little better situated. We're uh, still trying to get the sound down here. Um, as you know, I'm Casey Warren. I'm the town administrator and I am the dubious but confident signature on that application. Um, dubious because sometimes it's hard for me to sign my name on things. But I just wanted to introduce the team that's going to present the application and this is for site plan review and stormwater. And so our team is James Martin, attorney at Robinson Donovan, and Jesse Molino from Proterra Design Group. Thank you very much, Casey. We also have um, another member on Zoom. Who is? Are you on there? Let's see. Oh, okay. Tom, Tom Johnson. Tom Johnson's also on their team. He's on Zoom. Thank you, Tom, Jesse, and Jim. Okay, uh, please proceed. Well, good evening. As Casey said, I'm Jim Martin from Robinson Donovan, and um, I'm uh, pleased to represent the select board this evening. It's uh, a little bit unusual for a town select board to be appearing before the town planning board with a project, but uh, here we are. Uh, and. Um, I understand uh, uh, I was brought in because Lisa, who is your town council, can't represent both the applicant and the board. So uh, you're in capable hands with Lisa tonight advising you on uh, the planning board aspects of this. And, um, uh, I'm sorry, you need to lean closer to the mic. I can't hear anything you're saying. Okay, how's this? Much better. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and Jesse and I are here to present this project to you. It's um, there's no surprise of what the project is about, uh, but it's important for you to get all the details uh, for the site plan review of this project. And I think it's important to keep in mind that's going to be our focus, not any collateral issues. Uh, your jurisdiction is to look at the site plan review of uh, application and plans and proposals, and uh, hopefully um, a You'll find them to be thorough and set forth, but we're here to give you an overview uh, and to answer any questions that you have or to respond to any comments that the public has. Uh, so Jesse is the uh, engineer. Uh, this is uh, his craft and we'll start with Jesse uh, walking you through uh, the, the overview of this project. Good evening. Um, again, my name is Jesse Marino, I'm the Design Group. Um, I'm Jesse, we can't hear you. You have to speak in the mic, please. Yes, yes. Thank you. Just put your mouth. Well, right while Jesse's up. working on his application, I just also want to point out one thing. Uh, there are some requirements in your bylaws of three steps before appearing before you in terms of meeting with uh, your professional staff here and getting input uh, at an administrative meeting uh, prior to filing the application. And I uh, just want for the record to know that we did do that. Uh, we met with your building inspector, we met with your town official uh, through the bylaws, not a public hearing in any way, but just uh, providing them with the information uh, and then got the input from the administrative staff and then filed the application. So thank you. Yes. Those, those conditions have been met under your bylaws. Thank you. Back to Jesse. Back to Jesse. <laughs> um, can you guys hear me? Doesn't look like this might be on. You want to? Sounds try? fine. Yes, we can hear you. You can hear me now. Yeah. Yes. Right, um, again, so here we're for the municipal park and fields project, and like I was saying, um, 
it's been a uh, been a pretty long road here. We've had a lot of charrettes and different things. We've got a lot of different input from a lot of different people in town, and I want to thank everybody for that. Um, uh, before you here, as was stated, we're here under site plan review under Chapter 179, Section 5400. Um, we've submitted uh, to the planning board uh, permitting plans, a drainage design, application for permit and narrative, uh, traffic study. So why are we here? So the town is looking to develop a recently acquired industrial zone uh, parcel that's currently vacant with a history of agricultural uses into a municipally owned park. Um, the applicant, as was stated, was the select board. The owner is the town of Deerfield. Um, as far as our portion of the project, um, we have we've um, used a variety of consultants, um, for traffic, for landscape architecture, uh, for supplemental survey, and uh, for uh, soil blending and playing field. Uh, this is in addition to other design and permitting consultants that were used by the town, uh, not affiliated with us, but they certainly contributed to the project and to where we are at this point. Jesse, can you lean in a little bit more? I'm sorry, or just oh. take the mic out of the stand, whatever's easier for you. Just, okay. Don't keep moving your head. I'll do my best. <laughs> if you, you know, be like you're an actor on stage or something, take a, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's my old eyes here trying to see as well. Wow. But, um, so why are we here? Um, on the screen before you, um, the town of Deerfield wants to construct a municipal park. This is going to include uh, multi-purpose athletic fields, accessible walks, paths, uh, picnic areas, and uh, utility infrastructure and parking uh, to support the project. Uh, the site was selected by the town and voted on by the community at town meeting um, for purchase. Um, before you are, are basically phase one of the improvements, which feature the design and the permitting of site-related non-building structure improvements. This will support the park and make up the backbone of the project. Um, provisions here will be made to support a band shell, a pavilion, concession, storage and washrooms, uh, outdoor basketball court. Um, these will be in subsequent phases down the road uh, through donation, friends of the town, or supplemental projects. Um, one good thing here about this project is that it was able to use approximately five acres of previously cleared and plowed farmland. Um, the existing site, which we'll get into in a little bit, um, a majority of it's cleared, which is a, which is a good thing. Um, we also had a traffic study, and that traffic study uh, predicted that patrons will be able to utilize the access road that we proposed out to the street. Um, and it will provide um, no adverse impacts to the level of service to the existing uh, street and uh, nearby intersection. Uh, one of the good benefits here is that we're gonna convert this historical agricultural use that's got really thick compacted soils uh, into a park that's got over 250 trees proposed and it'll have a positive uh, effect on the soils. <laughs> Um, allow us to mitigate, provide for habitat, and promote infiltration. Some of you guys may know this as the Healthy Soils Initiative uh, that I, some of you may be familiar with. Um, primary uses of the park. Again, we had public input on several occasions. Uh, the primary uses for this park will be uh, public gatherings and celebrations, uh, summer concerts, uh, recreational walking paths, uh, athletic events uh, on the multi-purpose fields, and uh, educational uses tied to climate resiliency, which is uh, evident with the town's emphasis on the new green bylaw. Let's dive into the existing property a little bit. Um, it's eight and a half acre property. Um, it's rectangular in shape. It's got a small stem out to uh, Main Street. Um, the property is currently undeveloped. It's very flat. Um, as was stated, it's a farm field with uh, fringe woodlands. Uh, there are no steep slopes on the site, and much of the existing cleared uh, field is 2% or flatter. Get the screen close up here. Uh, so the subject property here is located just to the south of Pelican. 
Um, this is a manufacturing facility um, on the west side uh, of North Main Street. Um, to the west of our property is the Boston and Main Railroad. Uh, to the east and southeast are residential uses. And to the south uh, is vacant industrial property with uh, Frontier Regional High School and a sports uh, associated fields and parking located about 350 feet to the south. Um, this parcel was, was uh, historically farmed and uh, is currently harrowed by the town at least once a year. Uh, this is to turn the soil over and to cut down the weedy vegetation. Uh, the soils in this site consist of fine sandy loams and silt loams with uh, shallow groundwater and limited infiltration. Um, the, the photo, if everybody can see from home, this is uh, looking west onto the site. Um, the next photo when it comes up here, uh, this is looking uh, southerly, uh, sort of towards where uh, uh, Frontier would be, in the vacant parcel. Next one's looking east. This is looking east towards existing residences. And um, the last photo I have here for you is uh, looking north uh, towards uh, Pelican. So dive in here a little bit on the proposed amenities of the project. Um, as we stated earlier, the, um, the project features uh, a couple thousand linear feet of uh, uh, pervious pavement walking paths, um, almost a thousand feet of uh, stone dust paths and trail, a, uh, a shared use path from the street um, that allows for pedestrians and, and bicycles to be separated from traffic. And um, also picnic areas and, and large uh, open spaces and multi-purpose fields that can be used for a variety of functions. Um, as was stated previously, the majority of improvements are already located on land that was been previously farmed. Um, most of that is cleared. Um, for this project to move forward, we need to only clear about two additional acres, uh, basically on the fringes of the parcel. Um, to allow us to put in the fields. Uh, there are two fields proposed. Uh, the one to the west is larger and intended for sort of high school age children. Um, there's one to the, to the north and east. Um, that's uh, primarily be utilized for youth and uh, preteens, as well as uh, public gatherings and um, um, you know, places to sit uh, during uh, conferences. Um, we have a parking lot proposed with uh, uh, 69 parking spaces that are 9 by 18 in size. It's in a 90 degree configuration with 24 foot aisles. Um, we include uh, accessible spaces for uh, uh, folks that have uh, in wheelchairs or have trouble moving. Uh, we also have uh, some placeholders for compact and fuel efficient vehicles and, and EV vehicles. Um, the access driveway proposed onto the site is 22 feet wide. Um, bicycle racks are also incorporated uh, into the design. The town anticipates that the fields uh, will basically be only used one at a time uh, with, with scheduling between events. Uh, with only a single field use, the daily parking need is reduced. And this is in accordance with the town's new green bylaw. Along the east sides of the site where we're abutting uh, residences, um, we're proposing a seven foot privacy fence um, along with buffer plantings. Uh, this is, this is in, a, in consultation with uh, one of the neighbors and also uh, to meet the intent of your bylaw. Uh, the other is um, that we've tried to orientate the parking kind of north and south um, where um, vehicles will be facing towards uh, existing industrial uses in the vacant parcel. Um, as budget forecasts uh, allow other amenities, uh, such as the basketball court that we show, uh, bleachers, scoreboard, 
field lighting, and place safe jungle gyms will also be considered as, uh, as uh, budgets allow. Um, we did, there was a discussion with uh, folks uh, in town and public safety and the need to provide some security and site lighting. Uh, we were able to do that and we provided a photometrics plan in the package to review. Um, this was done with um, energy efficient LED lights that are only 14 feet tall. Um, the idea here that these are uh, cut off luminaires and they're shielded from visibility uh, to prevent light trespass. A small area down the center of the site um, is currently wetland. Um, we're proposing to fill and mitigate to that towards the west. In this area, um, I kind of zoomed in along the railroad tracks here, we're going to have a fence and we're proposing um, about 5,000 square feet of mitigation uh, for the disturbed wetland. This includes 90 trees and shrubs along this border. And the idea is to replicate and provide wildlife habitat, including uh, species that help pollinate. Um, one of the other advantages of the project is um, when we were out there and we did a lot of soil investigation out there, we found uh, generally the site has uh, 10 to 12 inches of, of thick compacted um, material um, that's organic topsoil. And I think uh, when we were out on the site, uh, there it's, it's pretty evident. Um, this is not a surprise, you know, years of farming creates this. Every time you till it, um, it creates this kind of thick cloud layer. Um, one of the drawbacks to that is obviously if you compare that to the wood, the wooded area or a site that hadn't previously been disturbed. Um, Jesse, just speak into the mic again, please. Okay, sorry. Thank it, you. Um, it hinders infiltration. Um, so one of the things here that we wanted to do is uh, promote the health, Healthy Soils Initiative um, and augment these soils uh, as we're constructing to help promote infiltration, increase storage capacity, and uh, provide increased drought resistance. Um, as far as utilities, um, we're looking to bring in um, water, sewer, electric, and communication um, from existing sources along Main Street. Um, some of these obviously like electric and communication are overhead, while others such as water and sewer are underground. Um, power and communication utilities, um, we are, once we're on site, we are proposing to go underground following the access road into the site. Um, we're looking to provide a transformer size for lighting and typical service loads for the concession and van shell, as well as uh, future electric vehicle charging stations. Um, our understanding is that there's uh, uh, some grants out there that the town can seek to uh, get to allow those type of facilities to be put in. Um, to maximize the use of the fields, um, we are also were asked to provide uh, infrastructure, conduits and pull boxes uh, to allow uh, future scoreboard and uh, perhaps uh, field lighting uh, for the rear here. Um, again, this is for uh, if future budgets allow and if, uh, if, if possibly if these grants are received in the future by the town. Uh, we're looking for it to be kind of set up here. The idea is that you don't want to rip up your new park in order to install some of these things in the future. Um, drainage. Drainage is always a big topic. Um, what we want to do is provide a series of uh, best management practices, um, including low impact design. Uh, constructed stormwater and conventional infrastructure in accordance with the town's uh, guidebook and the green infrastructure and climate resiliency policy. Um, the location here that we have is favorable in that it's not located within zone two. We're not in a wellhead protection area. Uh, we're not in a floodplain. Uh, we're not a site that has prime habitat and we're not above a high yield aquifer. So those are all good things. Um, the project is challenging though, because it is underlain by fine grained silty soils that are typical of a lot of farmland. I'm sure some of you are, are familiar with these. Um, so we have these kind of flat slopes with high groundwater and that, that 
requires some earthwork um, in order to provide a firm foundation and uh, to provide the topography suitable uh, to support drainage improvements. Uh, we did provide a drainage analysis. Um, we did use um, extreme precip uh, precipitation tables um, that are based on the Northeast Regional Climate Center. Uh, this is the Cornell data. Um, actually, um, there's a little bit of debate going around, but if you go DP allows you to use sort of some of these older values. What we chose on this project uh, because of the emphasis on climate resiliency is to use this more recent uh, data that takes into account uh, more rainfall events in the last 60 years of data to account for, uh, for these extreme events. Um, of course, any, the goal of any drainage system, right, is to handle runoff in a way that's sustainable, that doesn't cause erosion. Um, it allows us to treat the impervious surfaces and also meet, what we wanna meet is the pre-developed rates of runoff, right? After construction, we don't want to create a bunch of runoff and not have it mitigated uh, over the existing condition. You know, these are what's required in local statutes and also the Massachusetts stormwater management uh, regulation. Um, one of the ways we're doing this on this site is um, um, by providing uh, reduced, and serv uh, reduced impervious surfaces, um, lots of tree planting, and a mitigation of those soils. So on this particular site, we have a, a stormwater management proposed that routes stormwater, detains it, and controls the release uh, to meet the pre-developed uh, discharge rates. Uh, on this site, we were able to meet the two 10 and 25 year storm events. Um, we've also uh, evaluated the 100 and determined that we're able to control it uh, to avoid uh, offsite flooding. Um, as far as the impervious surface here, because we're a park, as opposed to an industrial site or some other commercial site, we really have a low footprint when it comes to impervious surfaces. Uh, we're less than 15% here on this site, which is, which is good. Um, additionally, we're aiming here, because it's a park, uh, we have a lot of uh, contiguous forested area here located to the south and southwest. We're aiming to keep all of that. Um, we want to keep that buffer. Um, not only is it, is it nice to look at, uh, but it also uh, provides uh, you know, stormwater filtration. Uh, in addition to that, as was discussed, we have uh, several hundred plantings to, uh, to account for um, some of the tree clearing that we have to do and to mitigate in some of these stormwater areas. Uh, generally, uh, on the front of the site, um, we have proposed uh, a bioretention cell in the middle. Uh, these are curbless, so it allows the water uh, generated uh, on these impervious surfaces where we park uh, to filter naturally through here before they go into um, uh, retention areas and constructed wetlands here located at the periphery. Uh, we also have similar uh, cells and swales located along the uh, uh, driveway. plan I just put up for you uh, kind of provides a little more detail in that area. Um, one of the things we were able to do here, because uh, we're bringing up the site, we're able to uh, propose many of the, uh, the, the accessible walking paths to be pervious. So that, that'll feature some open graded asphalt that allows water to percolate through uh, to provoke infiltration. Uh, this is a, an LID practice uh, that both reduces the runoff compared with conventional pavements, uh, but it also increases the site uh, ability to recharge groundwater. These are both uh, positive and good things. Um, if you've ever been to the site, it's pretty evident that uh, depending on the time of the year, and if you've had a big rainfall event, you do get some seasonal ponding on the fields uh, that are there. And again, uh, we believe that's mainly because of that thick cloud layer. Um, we've taken um, that to heart and we've also uh, proposed some 
uh, fred streams, cutoff swales, and drain inlets around the periphery, especially on the neighbor's sides to the east, um, to make sure that the site is not contributing to offsite drainage uh, impacts. What we're trying to do here is collect some of these areas that pass through our site and, and keep heading south um, and kind of direct them around uh, the existing neighbors. Um, along with uh, stormwater, um, we know that it comes with some level of maintenance. Uh, this is identified in the stormwater OM plan that's, that's drafted. Uh, it will need some sort of townwide effort to develop a budget and to work an agreement out with the schools for, for field maintenance. That would be the mowing, pest control, fertilization, and the water management uh, for irrigation of the fields. Um, some of the more conventional tasks, uh, street sweeping, maybe structure clean out, uh, other maintenance activities might dovetail better with uh, existing tasks already taken up by the local DPW. Um, so that's something that will definitely need to be worked out with the town. So as part of the project, uh, we've also did a traffic study. Uh, we hired a traffic consultant that provided counts and analysis for the future no build and build conditions. Um, basically what we did, uh, they, they put a series of traffic recorders out on the street and they, um, this allowed them to uh, measure the amount of traffic on the weekend and during the week. They also determined that as far as the proposed use of the site, the worst case uh, generation of trips that would lead to uh, traffic would be uh, the use of the athletic fields. Um, in order to make sure that the infrastructure uh, was suitable, um, we asked them to assume both fields are used simultaneously to be conservative, even though the town um, is, is not really going to be able to do that. Um, the town has stated that the fields are only going to be used kind of one at a time or otherwise schedule to avoid this conflict. When we do this, the daily parking demand on both the week and Saturdays for single use uh, falls uh, with about 60 to 62 spaces. Uh, which we provided uh, 69 to you. Uh, the existing traffic on the street, um, weekday traffic volume on Main Street was uh, about 3,600 vehicles per day. And that was measured on a typical weekday. On a typical week uh, end, it was a little less, uh, 2,900 vehicles per day. Uh, this is used as a baseline to determine um, when we build the project, if it will have any effect on the nearby streets and interstructures. The traffic consultant determined uh, that the proposed project is expected to generate a total of 143 daily trips over the course of an average weekday, in addition to approximately 800 on a typical Saturday. Now again, this is worst case using both fields simultaneously. Um, this equates to uh, a peak 33 trips uh, during the peak hour and 75 uh, peak hour on a Saturday. Uh, the good thing here is that the analysis shows that the existing site drive and the North Main Street infrastructure can efficiently handle this traffic uh, as the level of service is expected to be uh, A, during the weekday morning peak hour, and B, during the afternoon peak hour, which results in minimal delays. So based on this, the proposed project results in no adverse changes to the level of service or any vehicle delay uh, compared with a future no build condition or when we actually build the project. Uh, as part of the traffic study, we also looked at uh, site distance. Uh, the consultant measured uh, both stopping site distance and intersection site distance from the edge of the driveway looking out into North Main Street and found that both minimums uh, in both directions for the site uh, were met based on the posted speed limit and the 85th uh, percentile uh, travel speed, which was somewhat higher. Let's talk a little bit about project benefits. 
um, sort of summarize and, and, and conclude here. Um, the project will meet the need and craving for a public park and open spaces uh, that's the that the town is in need of. Um, this town's choice of this particular piece of industrial zone parcel will likely would likely have supplanted a future large and expansive commercial facility or industrial facility. Uh, the use promotes climate resiliency. This is in accordance with the bylaw by maintaining and preserving open space. Um, it also uh, adds uh, vegetation and also uh, parking and athletic fields that can be enjoyed by a majority of the town residents. Uh, there's trails, recreation, uh, multi-purpose fields, courts, encourage exercise and play for both adults and children. The a municipal playground also creates relaxed spaces, uh, which allow residents to connect and interact. And the use as a public park also can play a key role in preserving water quality, air quality, and reducing congestion. Uh, the idea here is that we're taking a, a particular industrial zone piece of land and uh, maintaining as an open space and park in perpetuity, and that uh, that's a, a great benefit and good benefit to uh, both the community and the environment. Um, the last slide I have up here is uh, some renderings that were prepared uh, with the help of our, our landscape design consultant. Um, sometimes the plans and the thick plans in front of you can be a little overwhelming. Um, the idea here is to give a kind of a snapshot into uh, what the project would look like and how it's envisioned to work. Um, and uh, just want to conclude with um, it's been a pleasure so far to work on the project. It's always nice to uh, be in front of a town and have the support, uh, you know, to do to do a project like this. Um, and um, I'd like to see it get built and get done. <laughs> um, Thank you. Do you have any questions? Um, <laughs> Thank sure you, Jesse. you do. Uh, I'd love to answer them. I think we'll hold off on um, questions for a moment. Um, if we have any other parts of the presentation, and then maybe I'll move forward with some other things. No, I think we're, we've presented our- Great, initial. thank you. Yes, it's thank you. comprehensive, and we appreciate you being as, as comprehensive and as brief as you can be. Um, before we move forward with the public comments, I think I will mention that, I mean, certainly we all can see that uh this is quite a comprehensive it's, it's a, a complex project although um a, a simple idea of a park and the playing fields um we do have a precedent for peer review in projects of this size um in particular in in addition to the precedent we also this is a this is the first time that we will be working with um our new site plan review bylaws um, and so we do want to make certain that we are conforming to the new bylaw. And also, um, Jesse, as you mentioned, <clears throat> stormwater management and the stormwater um, uh, construction is really quite complex. And so I think it would be good to have a, a second pair of eyes with that. Um, I've learned from uh, the town a couple of uh, possible firms, SVE and Berkshire Design, um, and so I would like to entertain with the planning board um, a motion to uh, send out a re request for proposal and RFP to these uh, possible firms. I don't know if there are any others and authorize the town administrator to, um, to sign a contract after consultation with the planning board chair. Um, so uh, if we could have some discussion with the planning board members about um, consideration of having peer review for this project how many how many are you thinking of it would just i think it could be one that could encompass this all three really the site plan review the stormwater management and the um address the the traffic i believe i certainly um consider the Sorry, I'm not here. This is Rachel. I consider the 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 wet this this wetland 
um, identified by Jesse right away, uh, right down the middle of a field. I think mitigating that and making certain that the, all the work that's going into this does check out, sorry, but that it makes it, and that um, we just talked very briefly about the um, maintenance uh, issues that would be ongoing and are not deferred to anybody but us, um, how that kind of spells out and what that is so that when we do turn, turn to uh, our DPW, our local DPW, wonderful as they are, they need to know specifically what we're adding to their plate and how that's best managed. So that, I think that issue um, is worth another pair of eyes to make sure, you know, you see it right down the middle of the field. Um, and that field is pretty much the, the crown jewel of this park right now. Um, so anyway, that, that makes sense to me, Thank Annalie. You. Mm -hmm. um, so this is Anna. Maybe if we could stop the screen share so we can see the, um, the whole uh, population there. And in the meantime, Andrea, and then I think there is a, a, a hand, couple of hands raised. I, my, uh, my question was about um, the peer review. I'm wondering um, how, how, many, how many peers we would pick, what, um, what the time frame would be uh, so that we um, would know when we would be, might be moving forward. I believe as much as possible, and that might be part of the RFP, but that we want this to uh, to commence as soon as possible and possibly, I mean, if at all possible, uh, it would be one firm and um, that they could report uh, back at our meeting in February. February. Oh. So it would be really Wonderful. quite okay. as quick as possible. <clears throat> quite short. a short turnaround. I, can I just ask one yes, question? Yes, Rachel. Bill Swayze wrote us about. Pardon me? So we have a request for comment from the fire department about us a access to the pavilion maybe could we that, just address the sure. peer review part sure, now sure, and then sure, we'll sure. Get I'm sorry, yeah. to that and then um potentially yes. have the comment from the public no i was gonna say i feel comfortable having a peer review i think that's a good idea i'm not sure whether i, I don't know whether we necessarily need one for the traffic study but certainly oh. for the, the wetlands right, that's i right. think it would that's all right, be that's right. combined yeah. as much as possible yeah. right i i feel i feel pretty comfortable with the traffic study Jonathan's. Jen, uh, Jennifer? Hi, uh, yes. I had a comment to make about when you get to that point about the request for comment. I want to say something before you talk about that. I'm sorry, I, I just missed what the comment was going to be about. Uh, about the request for comment that Rachel, or I think it was Rachel, somebody brought up, or Denise, somebody just brought up the request for comment. That was that was me, oh, Rachel, and I, I spoke out of turn. We're still on talking about the RFP for a right, peer review. So, so I'm saying, but when you get there, can I say something Thank before you. you start talking about it? Uh, certainly. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, uh, I'd like to address that, uh, Carolyn. I know you have your hand up, and Jennifer, you do too. But we're addressing right now the idea or the um, the. The piece of peer review. Um, so, if your comments aren't directly related to that, um, mine is. I wanted to say I strongly support that you're going forward with that. I think there's a lot of moving pieces to this, um, and as mentioned during our CCI meetings recently, um, I think having a thorough maintenance plan. That's what's going forward to the DPW for the wetlands maintenance um, system is really important to have. Okay, maybe we'll. Um, do you want to just do that? Maybe we just go forward and have a motion yeah. to uh, send a request for proposal to SVE and Berkshire Design and authorize the town administrator, if this is the protocol, I'm not sure, Lisa, or, um, Casey, Casey, to sign the contract after consultation with planning board chair. I, if I could, Madam Chair, uh, this is town council. Yes. Um, so that that's absolutely fine. We can send those scope of services out. And then um, if the motion includes um, that the with confirmation by the planning board chair, then we can move forward. Thank you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. So can we Madam, Madam Chair, is it appropriate to make a comment on behalf of the town? Select board. Can you speak um, just to the mic. Um, 
it's about the RFP? Our, yes. About the RFP? Okay. Yes. Certainly, and then, yeah. okay. Well, ordinarily, you'd be a private developer here, and the municipality would be asking for the, um, the applicant to pay for a peer review. Um, so here, the select board, which is the town, will be paying for the peer review, uh, which is the way it goes. Uh, my comment is directed at two things. One, the scope, because every time you add something to your laundry list, the cost goes up. Uh, number two uh, is the uh, turnaround time, because it's important for the town uh, and its budgeting process in this project to not uh, have it go too long. Uh, and then number three is, uh, in terms of efficiency and cost, we have to also go to the Conservation Commission. And uh, if there's a possibility to, uh, not possibility, I think it's practical to suggest that this right. be uh, a, particularly the stormwater management plan is what I'm talking about, because I think really from the town's perspective, the select, board of, the select boards, that's something that is legitimately um, to go to uh, peer review. And I, I, without binding them, I think uh, that would be understandable. But to have to have a second peer review for the stormwater management at the Conservation Commission uh, is is a possibility, but it would be, be unusual, but we'd like to uh, uh, you know, have them address it to the planning board and the conservation commission so that it would be submitted to both boards at when, once. Perhaps what we could do is have the RFP um, be reviewed by the conservation. When are you meeting with the CONCOM? Con we, we haven't filed, right? That, right that's it. Uh, so, yeah, that's a different consultant. It's um, a different consultant that's um, doing They it. are, uh, they've been contacted, I know that. Um, and I've reached, uh, okay. I'm available um, well, the other day. We certainly would, I mean, the stormwater management plan is um, of significant importance for the peer review. And so I would expect that uh, a peer review for the stormwater management plan, which includes wetlands, which is the primary yes, uh, right. purview of the CONSCOM, uh, should, should cover what the Conservation Commission mm -hmm. would would want i think so i mean this this is one of those moments where it'd be really nice to meet with them on the same meeting yes. <laughs> I, I know i see tim I, over I there i agree with you but i i think if we could just ask that it be addressed to both the planning board and the conservation commission the the, the peer review report uh then we could file that oh, along with yeah. our yeah well that seems paper, very paperwork. reasonable yes. i would believe and, and then as i said before the when you say send an RFP, I think you're going to have, I would respectfully ask that we know that the scope of that is. If it's going to be stormwater management, that's understandable. Uh, I know you have indicated and we tend to agree that a traffic peer review is not necessary. Okay, that's, that's, uh, I think so. And then, you know, determining whether or not the design of the fields and the layout is something you need to send a peer review is again within your purview. Um, uh, but. Uh, that's a you know that's a that's another cost mm -hmm. and a time delay. Well, I think because we do have um, this as a new site plan review bylaw um, that we wouldn't want to overlook. Understandable. Having a review of the, our, of the plan in relation to our new bylaw. Right. I don't. I don't. If I could, Madam Chair, I don't think the request yeah. is that this that the peer review review the design, but review the package to be in compliance with the site plan review bylaw is my understanding. So it would be a right. peer review of the stormwater and a peer review to be in compliance with the requirements of the site plan review bylaw. And we can seek a scope of services to that effect. Okay, so again, then our motion would be, as, as was just mentioned, to send out a request for proposal um, to for the uh, peer review of the stormwater management plan and to um, review that our that the site plan uh, proposal is in compliance with our new bylaw and that that be conducted as soon as possible and in court and in uh, coordination with the Oh, it, right. With the consideration that the, the Con Conservation Committee was had also access to the 
stormwater review. Correct. Um, sir, sure, sure, go for it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Attorney McLaughlin, I represent the Strathbone Village and Property directly to the south. Um, I appreciate uh, that you were including. I can't hear. We can't hear. Is this working at all? I don't uh, hear you at all. When you're very close, it is. Is it working at all? Now I can hear you. Yes. Right. Back to it. Uh, yeah, your your provision five four three two clearly enables you to ask for peer review on right. traffic. This is a seventy two page traffic study. The traffic of all things is the something that goes beyond the scope of most regular engineers, and. Um, the, the traffic is crucial to your new green bylaws. They specifically reference traffic. And it's going to be crucial regarding how this, how much you can allow on this plan. I know because it's site plan review, you can't say yes or no. But if the traffic is too much, you can't just rely on the applicant's traffic study. Mm. Thank you didn't you, know that you had to get a separate lawyer for the town. You're not going to use the same town's lawyer than your lawyer. Well, that's you should do the same issue. with the traffic study. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, other comments from planning board members about the um, scope of the peer review? So um, for the hands that are raised, other than we do have Kathy Sylvester on the planning board, if the other uh, comments are not about the peer review, I'll hold off on them till we finish this uh, addressing this. Kathy? I do uh, agree with Denise that it could be a limited review. Um, I don't see a traffic study needing to be repeated personally. Thank you, Kathy. Other, um, I guess we can have a, a motion and then um, a second, and then we will have discussion. I'll move it. I'll move that we put out a request for proposal. Speak into the mic, please. Oh, sorry, sorry, request for proposal. Um, this is Rachel Blaine a, a for a um, review, peer review to cons consider the stormwater bylaws, the stormwater re requirements with respect to this project. And that this is also made available to the Conservation Committee as a, an element of their review of the project as well. And that the peer review includes our compliance with our new storm and that, review bylaws. Right. Bylaw. right. So, yes. Okay. Could we have a second? Andrea, I second. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, all right. If um, Denise Mason? Yes. Andrea Liebson? Yes. Rachel Blaine? Yes. Kathy Vitroba? Yes. Kathy Sylvester? Yes. And Mary Cloutier? Yes. And Annalie Wolf Cool, yes. So thank you. Um, it passes 700. Um, thank you. Um, as uh, we're already beyond our time for the uh, planning board usually meeting, but I think if we have another, uh, maybe another 15 minutes that we can devote to this and then just a few more minutes to the rest of our agenda. Um, for public comments, um, as I had mentioned earlier, this in particular would be an excellent time for you to state um, big picture questions that uh, we can get on the record for actually potentially for the peer review and for the applicant to address in future presentations. Um, so let's begin with the hands that are raised here. <laughs> uh, Carolyn. Thank you. I actually um, don't want to cut Tim off. If Tim was going to talk about um, what you were going to put in for the scope for the Conservation Commission, but I, I appreciate it being robust enough that it would meet all the needs of the Conser Conservation Commission um, so that it, it wouldn't drag out long, very long, because of the timeline on this, we want to, you know, get going on this and put this out to bid and um, get this done, you know, be prior to town meeting. Um, I do want to say that I under, I'm hearing everyone on the maintenance issues. We will have a long-term MOU with Frontier as to the regards of the maintenance of the fields. 
um, and the DPW obviously would do snow plowing and stuff like that. But I would say, um, obviously we have, it has to be discussed on the select board level, but we would um, establish some kind of commission similar to the Tritown Beach Commission that has worked for Tritown Beach for you know decades. Um, we would appoint a park commission that would work with our recreation department and that would actually have um, you know, would advocate for a park budget and um, a park maintenance and that kind of stuff. Someone that would actually be in charge of the maintenance program. So I'm, I'm hearing that over and over again, and it will be dealt with once we get the park up and running, we will come up with some kind of solution along those lines. So select board will move forward with formal maintenance. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Chelsea. <clears throat> yes, um, Tim Hilchey, I'm the Conservation Commission Chair. The things that we're going to be concerned about when we receive an NOI for the project will be things like um, how much fill is going to be brought into this project. And that's something that I hope that the uh, designers will be speaking to you about in the more substance at the next meeting. Um, also, erosion controls and um, questions about um, what effect fertilizers, et cetera, might have on the, uh, the, the created wetlands around the project. And, um, and of obvious, of course, I, I would like to know that all of the parking, et cetera, we're talking about is pervious pavement or is, is that not the case? So um, I think that when your peer reviewers, if they could, if they could consider something like, um, an erosion control plan. I know that all, all of this will be done by whatever company that you hire, but if there could be a peer review of, you know, or suggestions about what are, what are best practices for erosion controls, that would be a long way toward answering the questions that are likely to come up when, when the commission meets about the project. So Good. thank you. Thank you, Tim. I think we'll probably work to see that it's, <laughs> you take a peek at the RFP before it goes out. <laughs> um, Julie Kazwa? Hello. Hey. Oh, cannot hear you. How about? Nope, still can't hear you. Okay. We heard, I heard you say, okay. <laughs> Try it now. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, for a minute, give it a try. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, 127 North Main Street. Hi, this is uh, Patty Pirog from 127 North Main Street. We're just south of the location of the new proposed fields and park. Um, we have two questions that we would like to get clarified if we could. One of them has to do with the uh, drain, the storm runoff areas. We see that a lot of them are gonna be to the south of the park, which we are one property over from that. And when Frontier did work, we had a lot of problems with flooding within our property because of those things. Will the water remain in those culverts to the south or is there a plan to move it to the west as Frontier tried doing with their property to get it away from the properties that are to the south so that we don't have water damage ourselves and flooding? So if there's a way we could get some kind of clarification from that, either through the peer review for the next meeting or something, we'd really appreciate yeah, okay. that. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then the other question that we have is, what is the pro plan that's proposed for getting the athletes from Frontier down to the park? That's something that we have concerns over because we are on the same side as the park and we know that the sidewalks are across the street. Um, we've a couple times mentioned, you know, looking at putting in raised crosswalks with lighting like they have in the college areas and things like that. Um, but we haven't heard a great deal on what the plan is to get the athletes and people who from Frontier down to the park area itself. Thank you, those are We'd like good questions to be addressed um, when the applicant comes back. Julie, are you gonna give it a try again? Yes, can you hear me now? Yes. Excellent. Um, I was uh, going to make a comment along the lines of the, this, the uh, previous speaker uh, right before me is, 
Um, there aren't any sidewalks on that side of Main Street. And one of the advantages of being near Frontier and actually near the elementary school is to have people be able to walk back and forth. And I don't see, uh, I, I think we need to see what, what the plan is to, to have people um, move back and forth on foot. And also um, bigger picture, I'm just wondering if there was an opportunity down the road for um, a walking path to go um, across from Frontier down, you know, back behind in the park so that people don't have to be out on Main Street when they're walking back and forth between the, the park facilities and it would make a really nice walk, further walking track for, for people. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Um, South Deerfield, whoever you are. <laughs> South Deerfield, I'm, resident, can I'm you Judith me? Rathbone, 131 North Main. My feeling is that the specifics and the design of this plan will destroy the neighborhood peace and quiet, everything I love, including wetlands and wildlife. For quite a while, I've had no privacy from the people who are already utilizing North Main, this, this particular space as a public space with their dogs and their loud noise. My property at the back is almost all wetlands. To preserve my privacy, the wildlife and the environment, I need an eight foot fence for 800 feet a design that would take into account the residential neighbors should include parking at the back so that sound and air pollution won't come onto my property or theirs. Your design has cars on my property line coming and going. I believe you should consider reducing the parking spaces to 30, which is more than enough for a soccer game on one field. The bathroom and the band shells should be put at the back. Families in other Deerfield uh, neighborhoods care about these issues deeply. We do too. I continue to advocate for a reasonable design when soccer fields are created on a wetlands. I'm not impressed with the Proterra uh, documents calling maintaining open space when you're putting in parking lots. I don't see any sensitivity to the abutters. And I don't understand why there was no competitive bid to prepare the design in the first place. We need to wait and see. I'm asking you to wait and see what the Attorney General will do. Our challenge to the zoning article, because the proper procedures were not followed, should succeed. The space will be open to everyone and the other towns didn't even get a chance to give their opinion about putting a public space in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Thank you. Um, are there other questions or, or comments? I don't see any other hands up. Pardon me? There's no other hands up. No other hands up there. Um, and we are limiting comments, one per person. I can't hear that person. Again, Attorney McLaughlin representing Ms. Rathbone. I had just some real questions. Um, in the application, when it talks about zoning, it references ART 16 Park. Does anyone know what that references to when, when they're talking about the zoning designation for this property? Can the applicant answer that question? We'll address this. Uh, the questions will be addressed in our next public meeting. Okay, so I, I don't know what that references to. Um, they keep talking about the memorandum of understanding. Can we see a copy of the memorandum of understanding? Because they keep referencing it as being important, what they're going to do with it. And also, is the applicant relying upon the memorandum of un understanding with the school for any type of zoning abilities to be before this board? Are they claiming some type of educational exemption? Okay. Um, number three, are they relying upon Article 8 from the special town meeting of October of this year? Oh, excuse me, last year. 
from October 4th of 2021. Because if they are, please understand, the Attorney General has not approved that. And my guess is she will not approve it. Uh, she may put it to the uh, to a curative statute pursuant to some operations can be undertaken with the town clerk. She may approve it, but she may not approve that. And it's not approved as of this afternoon. Um, also, kind of a technical thing, I was trying to see the side yard, rear yards, setbacks, front yard setbacks, and I couldn't see them specifically delineated where the structures are shown on the plan. Um, just trying to see, because in June, they did not allow uh, the vote to exempt the, the town from the uh, rear yard, side yard, and front yard setback, so they should show those. Okay, they may be you. in compliance, but it's hard to tell by looking at this plan. Thank you, sir. So just real technical questions there. If they could be answered next time, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we have a number of questions, and um, we'll try to have that be efficiently addressed at our next meeting. In fact, uh, planning board, are there specific questions that you would like to put forward or have on the record for uh, both the peer review as well as moving forward? Well, Rachel? my question was about the request for comment. Jen, you had a oh, comment? Oh, yes, Jen, I'm so sorry. This is Rachel. Hi, yes. Hi. Um, so I just wanted to say that um, that the comments that you received today uh, are not to be considered as an objection because of when they arrived. Because you just got them and there's a time statute to that. So just so you know, I just wanted to, you should have gotten them a while ago and you didn't. We Sorry. had, yes, we had two late comments that were received today, one from the police department and one from the fire chief. I know that one of the things I would like to see in the future actually is have um, our uh, public works DPW people and also the um, our emergency, various emergency um, departments come and So just so okay. you know that we did have a meeting with Proterra and um, the fire department, the police department, uh, and um, DPW. DPW didn't, he wasn't there, but he did see the plans. He was out on medical. So, um, okay. So maybe at, perhaps at our next meeting, they could report on the results of that meeting Meeting that you had. That's great that you had that. Yes. If, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, planning board, any other? You know, I, I, I do have questions, but I would like to reserve my questions until the next meeting, considering the time. Okay. Um, That's Denise. Sense. So perhaps, are there, if there are no other questions, we'll um, have a motion to continue the public hearing to our next, next meeting on February 7th, 2022. I so move, Andrea. What, what, what? I second, Rachel Lane. <clears throat> All right, and um, I should know this by heart by now. Uh, Denise Mason? Yes. Or is there any other discussion? First, I'm sorry. Um, Madam Chair, did you, I didn't hear you have yes, a time. Sir, sorry. That's okay. I didn't hear you have a time. I heard you say February 7th. I didn't hear you say 7 p.m. Oh, I didn't say 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Thank you. Again? I'm sorry, what was the date? Uh, February 7th, uh, 2022 at 7 p.m. It's about 20, 33, 34 days from today. <laughs> And hopefully at that point we'll have some, wouldn't it be wonderful we have the peer review by then. Um, all right, uh, so a motion to continue this to uh, that date and time. And uh, Denise said yes, Andrea? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Kathy Matroba? Yes. Kathy Sylvester? Yes. And Mary Cloutier? Yes. And Annalie Wolfkohl, yes. So we will continue this to um, our next, meeting um planning board priorities in the coming year what i would ask of the planning board rather than having any discussion right now is that um i had requested that everyone send me or tonight we would mention three or four of our individual priorities if you could send those to me um via email and i'll tell you the results of the of the compilation next week 
Um, Excuse yes, oh, yes, sorry. you are. Thank you. Oh, wait, Madam Chair. I into it. I wasn't sure. <laughs> We're just down. moving right along here. Madam Chair. Sure. I'd say if you have questions in the interest of time, not bringing up today, but I want to submit them in writing. To Anna Lee, the there's, there's a question. Right. Yes. Madam Chair, I'm up. Uh, this is a uh, town council, and I, I just heard, I, I don't, I'm not really sure exactly what process you're doing about. Uh, take send comments back to you and compiling no, them. No, no, that has to do with planning board priorities. It's no, totally no, no, different. I under I understand that. So I'm advising you on an open meeting law issue. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you may send oh. those. Okay, yes. those comments may be sent only to the chair Correct. and not to other members, and then you can provide them at the next meeting, but not email them out in advance unless Correct. they're made public. Okay. Yes. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Correct. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Always good to Thank <laughs> you. little open meeting laws. Correct. Um, <laughs> the um, Sugarloaf condos at our last two meetings, actually, we've talked about issues Thank with you. stormwater en enforcement. And I think that um, there's a question that those questions, I think, are going to be uh, either to town council or town administration about we want to figure out uh, who, what, what are the perceived issues? Who has enforcement responsibilities, and how can we find funding for uh, looking at engineering and um, uh, possible legal issues related to this? Uh, Jen. Yes, I sent um, your the questions to Lisa, and Lisa responded, and I sent those answers to. Bob, um, Bob, do you want to speak on behalf of that? He gone. Up <laughs> oh, there, he is. I, I would like to have. I mean, on the enforcement and the. I mean, I am the enforcement officer, but as far as reviewing an engineer, I mean, I'm not an engineer i'm not qualified so i feel like if we're going to be checking to make sure that everything was done completely to the engineer's design then there should be an engineer reviewing it and inspecting it mm -hmm. but, I, yes i think that uh i think that there's been some general consensus about that in our general discussions prior to this okay. It's a question of how do we pay for that excuse me sirs if you could have your conversation outside we can still hear your Casey, thank you. Uh, yes, Mr. St. Peter's. <laughs> well, uh, pardon me, Jen. Bob, are you done saying what you, I mean, from what, you wanna say a little bit more about what Lisa mentioned? Well, I think, yeah, what's, well, I guess we're still questioning what happens next if in fact we do need to try to figure out enforcement and uh investigation of the legal and the engineering issues well, here i mean the the engineer who did the design work will do a final inspection and either approve that it was done correctly or not and and that i would be accepting based on his qualifications. I mean, but if we're going to question that, then that's where I don't feel like I'm qualified to question it. Right. If it was done to the design and and he's going to submit a final construction document saying that everything's okay, then I will accept that. But if we're getting into a world of questioning the process, then I, I feel like it would be need to be done by an engineer. The peer review would come from the developer. It wouldn't be. So if we're questioning, we won't re release. Um, we wouldn't release the units until a peer review was done. If we feel like we need one by the developer, correct? But so here, um, if I could, Madam Chair. Yes, please. Um, so what would happen at the next the next time uh, a certificate of occupancy is needed or a building permit is needed, then the building inspector would ask for a set of as-built plans to date 
So he could then confirm that what was built is what was approved. The engineer with the stamp as the building inspector has suggested would have to mark on those plans if there was any deviation from what was approved. If there's a question about that or a question about the value to complete the project, then the town would engage a peer review engineer at the expense of the building, excuse me, at the expense of the applicant to be able to advise the town whether or not the work was done and to what value. So the first step would be to get an as-built plan um, as of the date um, a request for certificate of occupancy is being requested. That seems very helpful. Um, Mr. St. Peter? Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Bruce St. Peter's uh, Snow Barrier Circle. Can you, can you speak Part closer to the mic? Bruce St. Peter's Snow Barrier Circle. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Part of this whole question, I think, is a little bit askew. The base question is, has there or is there on record a performance guarantee as required by the stormwater permit and the site control permit? Because if you get to the point right now that he does not want to do anything, what is the leverage? Uh, as far as the as built, I mean, you know, the, the, the original permit required um, a, uh, a, a uh, three phases, the, uh, the uh, each phase to be completed within two years of the first building permit, uh, other than uh, there's a provision there that the, could go before the planning board and that time frame be extended. Uh, in which case that was never done from what I can gather. So uh, nothing out there has been completed even for a set of as built. So, you know, it, this is kind of like in between everything because the easiest excuse is, well, it's still under construction. And so this is problem being is part of what, you know, the stormwater, plan and all this stuff should have been done as the construction had been going on, not while he's on his last three buildings. So I guess it goes back to, is there on record a performance bond that was supposed to have been provided before the stormwater permit and the, and the definitive subdivision plan were approved? And nobody can seem to answer that yes or no question. Well, I, I can. Mr. Uh, Thank you. Chair, and um, through you, Madam Chair, uh, the documents I have reviewed that there is a covenant on record securing um, the completion of the project in accordance with the permits. That covenant is a title impediment and absent the release of that covenant by the planning board, then um, he, he can't sell or get occupancy for the remainder of the units. And so until the building inspector or the planning board release the, um, the covenant, that's the security at this point in time, given what you've provided to the town that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago, um, the town can say, we're not gonna release the covenant, any more covenants until a cash bond or surety bond is put in place or a tripartite agreement is put in place. So there is a surety in place that is a covenant it can't be released until the town determines what's left to be done um, or the building inspector determines that the work has been completed uh, in accordance with the plan. So that's where it is. And that's what the surety is, Madam Chair. And then Lisa, previously what you said was that in fact, we can require of the developer, um, the peer review basically of the engineering projects to see that what was provided for in the plan has happened. Right, when the, when the when you get to the point that you want an as-built or even a partial as-built, even if it's not completed, even a partial as-built, you may have a peer review engineer come in and review that to be sure that it's been done in accordance with the permits. All right, thank you. Denise? I'm sorry, so we can do that now because it's more than partially built. I mean, what's the completion rate? Uh, there is, uh, right now there is uh, six units, three buildings 
are the last three buildings to be done in that project. He is nearing completion on one other. He's, so in all reality, there's just three buildings on uh, for a total of six units that are under construction right now on Greylock Lane. So the trigger would be when he comes in to the building inspector and applies for a certificate of occupancy or a building permit. There needs to be a trigger. You can't just out of the blue say, I want to have a partial certificate or a as built done. There has to be a trigger. I see. So then when when he comes to the building inspector, the building inspector then has to be assured that the stormwater management plan was built as planned. And he needs to get a release of the covenant, and that has to come to you. So okay. can yeah. I ask for a little clarity on that? Since there's only three buildings left, I mean, basically, am I going to hold up the occupancy on those last three buildings until I receive a peer review? Absolutely. You're going to hold up the occupancy permit until he release, he files for a release of covenant. You can't issue that occupancy permit without a release of the covenant. In order to release the covenant, the planning board can say, show me you've done what you were supposed to do in accordance with the permits. Okay, so I have to do that since we're on down the last three buildings. I mean, as these units have been built, I mean, they've been being occupied, but don't do not I'll issue hold up the last right. ones then. That's okay. correct. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This is helpful. Man, man, All right. Yes, yeah, so if we can conclude. Uh, I was wondering, is the covenant that you are referring to uh, the one that is recorded uh, in book six, 7167, page 96 of the Franklin County Registry of Deeds? I don't know, Mr. St. Peter. I don't, I, I did not anticipate being on for this matter tonight. I was just oh, here. Yeah, so no, I don't know. There, there was also a release of lots from covenants that have been recorded up there. Right. That, by the planning board for for the entire project. But what we have heard is for the last three occupancies, we can't release, we can't provide occupancy for that until uh, this has been signed off on. Those lots have been released by these covenants as well. The last three? So is it the same covenant? Is that that? There's three different covenants. So there's multiple covenants. Yes, there's three different covenants that we in. The, all three of them release all the property that's involved in that. Over all right. Time. So notwithstanding that, and, and again, I don't know because I don't have the documents in front of me, but assuming everything that Mr. St. Pierre says is true, the occupancy permits still can't be issued until you are assured that the project was done in conformance with the plans. Yeah. The building inspector has that right. He has a right not to issue occupancy permits until he can confirm that all the permits were complied with. Or thank you. Surety has been. Or okay. surety has been provided. That's correct, Mr. St. Pierre. Okay. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> I think. So may I ask all right. one more question? So the last at, question. At this point, there has not been a performance bond or surety provided. Not that we know of. Not to our knowledge, I don't know, but we've got some other assurance other things in place that hopefully will help us moving forward. Everybody. The occupancy permits. If what yes. Mr. St. Pierre is, said is true, it's the occupancy permits. That's what, that's what the tea. That's the char hard. That's the okay. T. Okay, cool. Thank you. Well, th thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I guess that's finally puts a conclusion and some answers to some questions. And some questions. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Hopefully that we'll move forward. <laughs> All right. Um, I think at the um, according to the last select board meeting, um, the select the um, select board will be coming back to us to address some of the questions we had about the tourism Thanks, overlay Chris. district. Um, Thank Good you. Night. New business. Um, we do have to submit a uh, FY23 budget to the um, to the town by I don't know. It's the 23rd, 24th of of January, which is obviously before our next meeting. Um, we have been level funded in the past. Um, there has been a request for level funding now. 
um, I have kind of put, there have, has been some discussion about um, whether or not the town might be able to um, budget in the future of a town planner. If it's on the t payroll, that would not be part of our responsibility. If it is through a consultant or a vendor, it could potentially be part of our bid budget. So I'm, Brenda is working on that, our, our accountant, and I'll be talking with, um, with Casey about that. And so I think for the planning board to know that uh, we'll either probably be submitting a level budget, the level funded budget or something to include the planner as um, is determined with town administrator. Sounds good. Okay, um, any other business not reasonably anticipated? We got a lot of business tonight and thank you all. For Very productive evening. Um, pub any other public comments? None that I can see. Thank you, Jen. Um, or reports from other committees or? I just, I just have yes. one are the CCI uh, connecting community initiative is having a meeting tomorrow night and we're trying to firm up our final plan of information that we're taking to the mass municipal association conference. And you know again as usual everyone gives everyone who's on the board representing all the various boards and committees will be giving reports ongoing reports tomorrow so night. As to be transparent so that people in town know what's going on. Fantastic. Thank you, Denise. And it's a Zoom meeting? Yes, it's a Zoom meeting. It's at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Thank you. Um, our mail included uh, from Greenfield, Montague, and Shelburne, uh, ZBA and Public Planning Board meetings. Um, and those are posted here in our town offices if people want to see. Some of those meetings have already gone by and some are happening this week. Um, Reminder to the planning board that our campaign finance reports are due January 20th. And um, our next meeting will be uh, February 7th, 2022, 7 p.m., remote hybrid or in person. And the things on the agenda, we've got the continuance of this park and... Uh, tourism overlay, the select board coming overlay. back with... Um, uh, woo, woo, woo. Uh, whether or not there's any additional updates from the condos, I don't know. Those are the only two things. Okay. Oh, and then um, reporting uh, the results of the information I get on the planning board priorities. Good. Okay. So, uh, remote, hybrid, or in person? Planning board? Next February. I think the hybrid today, tonight worked pretty well, so I would probably vote for hybrid. I second. How do you guys feel out there on TV land? I'd like to do hybrid again. Yeah. Good. I do know from um, a previous uh, last week's select board meeting that the hybrid is quite a bit more complicated for the town. Mm. Um, so just keeping that in mind, it might be a future that we're either all Zoom or yeah. all in person. Yeah. Kathy? I, I prefer all Zoom. Thanks. Okay, so I, Zoom or hybrid? I, well, you know, considering what we were doing tonight, and I think we'll have more of the same than the next time. I would, I would prefer hybrid for this because there's just a lot, and I think it's, I think it's much easier to be in person for for a lot of the meetings. Can I make a comment? Uh, Jen, yes, um, Jennifer. Either way, I'm fine with it. I just. We don't know what this variant is going and how it's moving forward. Sure. And I don't think we need to take a vote mm. on it. I think that we could leave it so that two, you know, 48 hours before the meeting, we could you could you can have a discussion about it. It doesn't need to be a vote because if we vote, then we're gonna have to have it that way. If we leave it so that we can make the decision. 48 hours before and it's posted that way when we get up, we leave the opportunity for flexibility and changing it. Mm -hmm. Because if it's posted and if there's a hearing notice or if, you know, if, if things come up before it, it makes it very rigid and it's very challenging then to meet those requirements. And if we change and, and the town hall closes or other blah, 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 you know, I don't need Excellent. to. Okay. 
So I'll be making that decision at the time when it needs to be posted in the newspapers. Perfect. So Sue, okay. Sue has opportunity for that. Good point. Thank you, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Thank All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. Ha! <laughs> Rachel, uh, Andrea, yeah, second. on it. Denise, well, yes. Thank you all very Guess much. Guess you guys missed me last month. This is <laughs> <laughs>